Game of Thrones. I've been out of action for the last three or four weeks and I got to watch Game of Thrones in a very unusual place. Last episode. Extremely excited to watch the last episode. After watching the second to last episode and watching Daenerys go rogue and burn the place. You know, um, up until that last episode, the whole last series, you know, I've enjoyed. And um, obviously the writers are writing their own show. They don't have the material of the, the book. And obviously the writer of the book isn't going to give the complete ending of the series until he's written the books to the writers of the TV show, you know. Um, so, you know, up until that point, I've been happy with the series. The production value of the show has been amazing. But the last episode, what's going to happen? And... You know, it was hard to to figure it out. But I felt very let down in the last episode of Game of Thrones. I was crying, so, no. Um, it was strange. The ending was strange. The only part of this episode I really kind of enjoyed was the last part where the king's hand Bronn and and them sitting around the table being the new you know uh, master of coin master of arms master of this you know deciding what's going to happen you know it got a little bit light-hearted and a little bit fun and um, it's good to see Bronn finally get something so I think he got something called the Grey Water which I'm assuming was the Lannisters lands did Bronn get the Lannisters lands he deserved it he deserved it because he saved a lot of Lannisters so you know I like that part of the story um, the final fight with the mountain and his brother that was pretty epic in the way that ended um, you know, Arya, I thought, may have played a hand in the last episode, but just walked around aimlessly. Um, I liked that Jon Snow killed Daenerys. Um, but the dragon afterwards, I, I, at that point, everything started going sideways like the dragon not burning him the army capturing him and then sending him to the night's watch brand the broken becoming the king brand the broken who played practically no part in many of the last few episodes, which I complained about not utilising his abilities, it's just wrong. Like, was it done as a payback to the writer of Game of Thrones so that he'd sell more books to say thank you for using his story of Game of Thrones? Was it, was it to help him sell more books? Was it... I don't know. Really don't know. And Jon Snow. It should have been like I am killing the Queen. Um, and then the dragon roasting her alive. Uh, you know... I don't know. Um, Jon Snow becoming the king. Um, it just... I don't know. There could have been a lot of different ways that it ended. But it's not for me to say which way it should have ended. But, you know, we're always uh, motivated by our desires and our, you know, imagination on what might happen. 
Um, Jon Snow became quite a fan favourite, but also that becomes a curse for him. You know, hopefully he saves enough money to to keep him going because once you become such a big star in those shows, it's very difficult for them to be successful afterwards. Um, yes. Um, I don't know, it was just strange and Tyrion Lannister's character just went to shit in the last series, last episode. I don't know. And then I have to admit I liked Daenerys as burning all of the boats. Um, but she somehow got through all of those ballista bolts. Um, that wouldn't be an easy thing to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's it, it was disappointing. Like once I sat there after watching the last episode, I kind of disappointed, sad, just, I don't know, it was just a very strange feeling after watching so many episodes and, you know, it being the, the biggest and best TV series for a lot of people, um, to end in such a way that Brand the Broken, who hardly said a word in the last few episodes, becomes the king of the world. Very odd. Very odd. Anyway, there's not much new on TV to watch. So, I've gone back to watching some old stuff. Anyway, so, I've, um, the new X-Men movies out now in Australia. I'm going to go to the cinema. I was actually going to go last night, but I'm going to go very soon. The new John Wick movie is out. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, I relived a little bit of childhood memory and um, introduced to my son the cartoon series Dungeons and Dragons. And he's watched about 20 episodes now. And he loves it. And he talks all about the characters and the story and what happens in each episode. And I kind of forgotten on actually how good a cartoon it was. The sounds, the characters, the voiceovers, the stories. You know, it's kind of questionable on what age to watch it at. But these days, kids are exposed to so much stuff. And, and those lines are very blurred these days. So he's getting into watching Thunderbirds. Um, and I... Also got the Robotech. When I was young, I very much liked watching the Robotech series. And that was like a pretty epic cartoon um, series. So, you know, I'm trying to have those ready for him when he gets old enough. Um, and some of the best animated movies that anybody could watch is the Japanese anime director. Ah. Uh, he, he did the movie Spirited Away, um, Howl's Magical Castle, um, Hayao Michigo, I can't remember his name. But if you want to have something to watch, you need it needs to be in Japanese. It needs to have the English subtitles. You can't watch it with English voiceover. It just doesn't work. You've got to read it. Those are some of the, the best movies to watch with younger kids they're they're, they're quite safe um, but they're very 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 good movies like you know you go find the director look at the movie Spirited Away Howl's Magical Castle or Moving Castle um, and look at the reviews and there's a reason why they're reviewed so highly um, but I can't wait till he's a bit older a couple of years older I reckon and he can watch those um, yeah, Game of Thrones, what a let down. We need like a um a director's cut, but it ain't going to happen. I think we'll have to get the book and read the book when it comes out. UFC. So we are going to have a very special event 
this weekend. So let's start from the bottom. One of my favourites, Tai Tuivasa, from Australia or New Zealand. Basically, we kind of consider ourselves kind of one but separate, if that kind of works. But anyway, so I just saw him um, in some of the pre-vite stuff, and man, he looks slim. Now, I don't know what's happening, but I think he's made a few changes, and I think he's going to try and come into this fight a little bit differently. You know, he was kind of on a very upward trajectory of uh, winning. But then he faced Junior Dos Santos, and that is not an easy person to face. And um, he lost that fight. Um, and he still did his shoey thing. Man, I, 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 I just can't. It's not a thing to drink beer out of a shoe. Drinking beer is a good thing, but drinking it out of a shoe is not my thing. But that's his thing, and he's made it his own, and it works well for him. But anyway, so a very, very exciting fighter to watch. And um, yeah, he looks very different, and I'm very excited to see him perform, obviously being Australian and New Zealand. I'm going to be wanting him to win, which is just natural. And you've got Jimmy R Riviera. Um, it's kind of like uh, the fight in between, and um, I'm not quite sure who he's fighting, but I'm sure it's going to be good. And then the card really begins. What many people are saying should be the main event. And in technicality, if there was a belt going around somebody's waist, it would be the main event, but there's no belt. But let's talk about this. Tony Ferguson versus Donald Cerrone. When I heard Donald Cerrone accepted this fight after Ally Quinta, only like a month ago or something like that, I thought, man, that's a tough fight. I don't think anyone really wants to fight Tony Ferguson because he's, he's good. He's really good. I don't know who's going to win that fight. I like both of them. Um, you know, I honestly like Tony Ferguson. You can't not like Cowboy. Um, oh, man, I don't know. Tony Ferguson, though, you know, he does go out there and he leaves himself open to get hit. And it depends if he comes out like that or whether he comes out slower, more focused, trying to win on points and not trying to, to finish it so much. If I was Tony Ferguson, I might be trying to take him down to the ground and try and submit him. But then again, it's, it's not easy anywhere. Um, Don Cerrone, he's had his ups and downs, um, but lately he's on his ups. You know, he's got fantastic punches and kicks. He's got good reach and strength and size. I think, though, his secret to winning is he has to hurt Tony Ferguson. He needs to kick him in the head. Uh, I think that's his key to win is to connect with the shin to the head um, because Tony Ferguson's pretty tough. And one punch... You can't count on a punch, but you can count on a kick to the head. And that's, I'd be going for that. Kicking his legs, kicking his legs, kicking his legs, kicking his legs, and bang up top. But still, it's not easy because then Tony Ferguson's going to try and take him down. So I don't know how this fight's going to play out. Obviously, they're both going to have their, their game plan on what they're going to do. But, you know, this is the fight most people are talking about. And it's a, it's a real shame because the next fight on the card is um, Valenchenko, um, Valentina Shevchenko. Um, she's very, very good. And I'm a big fan of hers and her style. And, <clears throat> you know, it's hard to see someone to beat her. But in this sport, it's, it, it doesn't take much. 
it's like the boxing, the Anthony Joshua guy got uh, knocked out by Ruiz. Um, it doesn't take much. And it's all about, you know, who can impose their will and, and on the other person, you know, not giving up. You know, the mind is, is so crucial in these situations because in a fight or flight situation, it's very easy to give up. Um, so I don't know, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for that fight to be honest. Um, but it's been completely overshadowed by so many other things and it's a little bit unfair that it's not being promoted. Um, and you got the main event, Henry Cejudo versus Morales. And that looks like that's going to be a firecracker of a, of an, uh, of a match. I reckon it could even be better. It could be the fight of the night, to be honest. And people are not giving it enough credit. But, you know, Henry Cejudo looked great against Demetrius Johnson. And TJ Dillashaw, he just come out and just went swinging. I think that's a tactic that it can work, but it can backfire on you in, in the UFC is to come out hard and fast and just go for it. It's very risky, though. Um, and then TJ Dillashaw got... Uh, fined and uh, he got busted so you know it's very very hard in that sport um, to to perform at that level so that's the match and then on the undercard at the very very first fight is one of my favorite favorite fighters Joanne Calderwood um, I remember watching that season of Ultimate Fighter and her voice is just perfect for ASMR and I really, really love listening to her talk. And um, she does well as fighting as well. It's not an easy sport. Um, but at least, you know, she was able to continue on from the Ultimate Fighter show and have uh, some success, obviously not to get to the belt, but at least enough success to continue and have a career in the UFC to to be there because that's not easy, not easy at all. And then Carolina, her last name is, starts with a K, um, and she's fighting as well. And, you know, she had a little bit of bad luck and, um, you know, I'm interested to watch her fight as well. So really looking forward to this event. Um, lots of potential great fights what happens I don't know uh, obviously the main fight I'm looking for is the Tony Ferguson versus Donald Cerrone and then that comes into play in September they've um, finally agreed for Dustin Poirier versus Khabib Nurmagomedov that is not going to be an easy fight um, it, none of these fights at that lightweight weight division are easy. They're all so tough. But, you know, for me, I see it as Tony Ferguson deserves a shot at the championship. Um, Tony Ferguson, the winner, Tony Ferguson, Donald Cerrone versus the winner, Khabib versus Dustin Poirier. They should be fighting next. Very, very simple. But then you have the complication of Conor McGregor, which, uh, to be honest, he doesn't really fit into that picture in a ratings, his wins and his fights. He doesn't fit into that picture. Problem is, is he fits into any picture because he's worth so much money to promoting an event that if they can get him onto an event, then they're going to get pay-per-view buys. So, you know, Khabib versus Dustin Poirier, whoever wins that, Connor gets first choice to fight that person if he wants to. If he wants to. All right. Whereas, really, it should be the winner of Khabib and Poirier should be versus Ferguson, Cowboy. That should be who meets next. But 
kind of can break that simply by saying, I want to fight. And the UFC is their business. And the potential for money for a rematch with Khabib is if Khabib wins, that's if Khabib wins. You know, if Khabib tries to stand with Dustin Poirier, he gets cracked. Dustin Poirier can capitalise. You never know. If Khabib goes in for the mauling, I think Ferguson's the only person that can stop the mauling. Um, see what happens. But I'm really excited for this event and we don't need Conor McGregor in the UFC anymore. We've got enough people out there.